What's going up, on? Man, that vehicle right there is involved in investigation. That is not mine. Okay, so I'll say that then. I think, not all right. So who, so who, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're we asking one question. On, so I, I don't know. Why are you being so hostile right now? We're just asking one question, man, quick. Right. Is this not your house? Your no, it's not my house. Okay, name? but understand, if, not you my step, house. If, if you take a step inside that door, right, okay, I will drag you out and put you in handcuffs. Okay. Hello? So, you do have a duty to identify yourself, we ask, especially while conducting an investigation. I want you to understand that. Please listen to that as well, ma'am. The second thing is, again, sure. that car back there. Welcome back to We The People University. My name is Avaya Israel, former police officer and former sheriff's deputy. I was just about to call it a night when someone sent me the video uh, from the civil rights lawyer who was actually covering uh, the video. Um, it was a response video from the Clayton County, Georgia Police Department. And they were responding to a video that I recently released um, yesterday. So, or was it maybe two days ago? Um, and the video is showing the Clayton County Police Department arriving at um, the home of a few people and they stated they were conducting an investigation. But the way in which they conducted the investigation uh, was all wrong. Um, I'll let you guys watch the video really quickly and then we'll we'll touch a little bit more on their response. And I actually have the video from the civil rights uh, lawyer because he did an excellent job of breaking down the curtilage and what the officers could or should not be doing. So we'll play that and then we'll touch more on it as well. This ring camera footage hit the internet. Uh, we the People University posted a video on this. People have been sending this to me showing an encounter between Clayton uh, police in Georgia and these homeowners right at their front door. And now the Clayton Police Department has responded with a counter YouTube video. Let's go through it and see who's in the wrong here. You ain't gotta talk to them. That's not your car. They actually you just got a That's not your car. The original video that was uploaded did not contain many factual details about the context or background of what was happening here, but as best as I can tell, this couple is returning home and the cops are, are next door or at another nearby house performing some sort of investigation and they attempt to basically force this couple to participate in the investigation. So before we get to the rest of the video, this is one of my favorite issues where you have homeowners at a home within the curtilage of their home so within the front yard and even better right at the front door and you have an encounter with police who do not have a warrant so let's watch the rest of the video and see what we can tell from this video and then we'll get to the cops side of the story we, we don't have that why why what you need to know my name for what's up so you're not gonna give me your name why do I need yeah. to give you my name, Because we're in the middle man. of an investigation. I'm asking you a question. I have nothing to do with that, but I'm, I ask you a question, so what's your name? You can step down. So how you know what we're talking about? You can step down. I have nothing. I don't you're know talking you. to me. You I can't run the back. I can't run the back. Exactly. Because, so because again, if you're going to the house, you're going to jail. Both of y'all. What? Why? For what? Like Obstruction. 16-10-24. Obstructing or hindering law enforcement officers. Whoever knowingly and willfully resists, obstructs, or opposes any law enforcement officer in the lawful discharge of his or her official duties shall be guilty of a misdemeanor. And this is the screenshot that the Clayton County Police Department put on the screen in their response video um, when they responded to the video I made a couple of days ago. Um, but there's a problem. The obstruction thing here is not going to fit. These people have a Fifth Amendment right. They do not, I repeat, they do not have to speak with you. So if you're requesting or trying to order ID from them, first, you must uh, have reasonable, articulable suspicion that they are suspected of committing a crime. And we're going to see later in the video by Clayton County Police Department's own admission, they don't have that. They don't have that. So you don't have that reasonable articulable suspicion that they've uh, committed a crime, or at least the male in the video, you don't have that. And so now you're asking him for his name. He's refusing to talk to you and you're seeing that it's obstruction. That's not going to fit because as we read the law, you must be in the lawful 
discharge of your duties. And if you don't have any lawful foundation that they have committed a crime, because you're still trying to just, you're, you're investigating at this point. There's nothing solidified. You're not suspecting him directly of committing a crime. Therefore, you can't order him to give you ID until you believe he has committed a crime. You're not within the lawful discharge of your duties, which means this cannot be obstruction. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. I dare you to take a step inside the house. So you're not gonna give us your, your information? Your going on. That vehicle right there isn't walking on the Okay, so I'll tell you that then. I not so who, so who, the, 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 we're asking what question? So I, I don't know. Why are you being so hostile right now? We're just asking one question, man, quick. Is this not your house? No, name? it's not my house. Okay, but name? understand, if, not you my take, house. If, if you take a step inside that door, right, okay, I will drag you out and put you in handcuffs. Okay. Hello? So, you do have a duty to identify yourself, we ask, especially while conducting an investigation. I want you to understand that. Please listen to that as well, ma'am. The second thing is, again, sure. that car back there. You can go ahead. I'll be with you. Right. Oh, my brother, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. whoa, 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 whoa. The biggest constitutional issue here, before we get to the cop side of the story, is can the cops just come up to your front door and say that they're investigating something and force you to ID, not let you go into your house? Let's see what the cops have to say, and then we'll get into what is the law. This is actually something I wish more government agencies would do. In response to the YouTube video from We The People University, they make their own YouTube video response. Um, containing the the details and the facts as they see them and making their argument to the public. OCGA 16723, criminal damage to property in the second degree. OCGA 161024, obstructing a police officer. On December 15th, 2023, Officers of the Clayton County Police Department responded to an address in College Park, Georgia, concerning a report of damage to property. At that location, officers spoke with the victim who reported that there was an ongoing dispute between her and another female who has repeatedly trespassed on her property. Following an earlier dispute, the female, accompanied by four others, returned to the victim's residence and caused significant property damage. The suspect smashed the windshield and front headlight of the victim's vehicle, and the suspects rammed another vehicle into the victim's vehicle while it was parked, leading to more damage. Two of the suspects then kicked the victim's front door, causing additional damage. The incident was captured on video. Over $5,000 in damage was reported by the victim. The victim advised that a male, who remains anonymous, provided transportation for the females to the residence. That male agreed to guide officers to the location where he dropped the females off. Officers relocated to the location where they observed a vehicle matching the description of the vehicle used to ram the victim's car parked behind the house. Officers also encountered a female at the house who had been at the previous house where the damage occurred based on video from that location. While investigating the suspected vehicle at the house, a male walked to the vehicle at which time officers began questioning him about his knowledge of that vehicle. 
The officer's body camera footage begins as officers are checking the secondary house for the suspect's and suspected vehicle. All beautifully said, you know, you got criminal damage to property, you have obstruction. Here's a problem with the criminal damage to property. Okay, there is a, a crime. I understand. But the person you went hands on with, you did not know if he was involved in that crime which means you did not suspect him directly of committing a crime, but yet you ordered um, ID from him and you told him that he would be obstructing for not answering your questions. So he's going to be obstructing for um, exercising his Fifth Amendment right. So that's that's the primary problem here. Not that the cops are actually investigating the crime that took place because that's their job and we all want police to do their job, right? So that's not a problem. The problem is we just want you to do it correctly instead of making excuses or trying to cover tracks. How about saying, hey, you know what? We can do that better next time. But let's get back to the video and let's see how the rest of it plays out. Seven, seven, Pine Guy drive through. That one. That's it. Oh, that's, the that's the tag right there. Confirming y'all are at that address. Yes, ma'am. Also, can you copy your tag as well? Is this one? I'm going ahead with it. Out of Alabama, three Adam zero, two Nora Young seven. Yeah, cause she says Salora. Hey, brother, who car is this? Yeah, who car is this? Is that dog chained up? Okay. There won't happen to be no damage. Yeah, whose car is this? Can you answer the question whose car it is and why it's in the back? Is this a, uh, this your car? Hey, so that blue car that she was talking about is parked in the backyard of his house. Yes, and it has black paint transfer as well. That matches that black Chrysler. And also the lady wrote down the tag, has the exact same tag on there as well. So, buddy, no. Initially I thought it was that one, but that's the blue car right there. So there it is. And it has a tag on it. I took a picture of the tag that she wrote down. And she did describe a blue car as well, but I thought initially she was only talking about that blue car, but it is that one as well. Well, apparently it's a guy in the back 25. who's not answering no questions. How you doing, ma'am? Comes back to a Raynard Huffman. What'd you say? A Renard, R -E -Y. Well, for one, I'm sorry. My name is Officer Piggins, Clay County Police Department. This is Officer Ho. This is Officer Smith. How you doing today? I'm good. You okay? You stay here? You don't stay here? Where you stay at? I stay in Dunwoody. Dunwoody? That question. I can't have friends. I mean, obstruction is a beautiful charge. It is. Obstruction of what? Our investigation. I mean, you kind of do have to talk because, again, obstruction is a hell of a charge. I mean, you kind of do have to talk because, again, obstruction is a hell of a charge. Here's a problem. No, you do not have to talk. I have the right to remain silent if I choose to. And you have the right as a police officer to investigate. But to tell someone that obstruction is a hell of a charge because they are refusing to talk to you, then that's a problem. There are other, you know, uh, avenues of obstruction that you can charge someone with, but them just simply exercising their first, uh, their fifth amendment, right? That's not the case. You can't make a right a crime. Oh yeah. Because I'm in the middle of an investigation, so if I ask you for your name, you ain't got nothing to do with what? So you're not going to give me your name? Why do I need to give you my name? Because I'm in the middle of an investigation. I'm asking you a question. I have nothing to do with that, But I'm, I asked you a question, so what's your name? You can step down. So how you know what we talking about? You can step down. I have nothing. I don't you're talking to me. You don't have to, but you can back. step down. I came from the back. Exactly. Because, so again, if you go in that house, you're going to jail. Both of y'all. Why? For what? Like obstruction. Said, we're in the uh, obstruction. What? Because no. we have an investigation oh, going on. Man, that vehicle right there is involved in an investigation. It's not mine. Okay, so I'll say that then. 
I did. It's not hard. So who? So who's in it? We asking one question. Why are you being so hostile right now? We just asking one question. One thing I can tell you from working in Georgia as a police officer, when you run a tag or a twenty eight through the system, it's going to bring back a picture. He could have easily ran the tag. Um, let me say that in most cases, it will bring back. It will show you a picture. If you want to know who owns the vehicle, run the tag, and there's a good chance you can see if it's that individual or not. Is this not your house? What's your no, name? No, it's not my house. Okay, What's your but name? understand, if you step, a, if you take a step inside that door, right, okay, I will drag it. you out and put you in handcuffs. Okay. Try. It. What's your name? What's your All name? Right. You're not Watch this. Your name? Watch this. Right. Watch name? this. I dare you to take a step inside the house. So you're not gonna give us your, your information? No, hold on. Wait, let me, let me just do it. You don't even know your own passcode. That's crazy. You sure this is your house? Hello? So, you do have a duty to identify yourself when we ask, especially while conducting an investigation. I want you to understand that. Please listen to that as well, ma'am. The second thing is, again, that car back there. Hold, my brother, hold on. Hold, hold, hey, hey, hold, 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 hold. hey it's, bro, ho, if she don't want to talk, bro, put her handcuffs too. She can go as well. Simple as that. I'm looking for this here and I'm see if you can find it. Did she identify herself? Yes, yeah, she did. Okay. Keep out the running. Gotcha. You okay? Me? Yeah. We'll talk about it. No. The male suspect was ultimately released from custody pending further investigation, pending further investigation to determine whether the male was directly involved with the criminal damage incident and to identify the rest of the suspects involved in the case. Criminal warrants will be considered at the conclusion of the investigation. Again, as I said earlier, by the own admission of the Clayton County Police Department, they did not know if this man was directly involved in criminal activity. So therefore, they did not have reasonable articulable suspicion that he had committed or was about to commit or was in the process of committing a crime. And that is what you need. That is exactly what you need to demand or order someone to give you identification as a police officer. So again, the problem is not with the police doing their job. The problem is with police not doing their job properly. There's a way you have to operate as a police officer. The, the days of do this because I said so or I'll charge you are over. Everyone's learning their rights. Everyone's standing up for their rights. So therefore, the last on the list to learn their rights or the rights of the people are the police. You have to learn what you can and cannot do legally. And that's a huge problem in policing today. Again, I want to give uh, a shout out and kudos to the civil rights lawyer uh, for covering this and uh, really clearing up the uh, portion about the curtilage. And um, I think he did a great job and I'm really glad he did so. The home is the most protected place under the Fourth Amendment which guarantees our right to be free from unreasonable searches and seizures. Now, the constitutional protection of our home extends to the curtilage of the home, which is, quote, the area immediately surrounding and associated with the home. There was a 2018 U.S. Supreme Court case, Collins versus Virginia, which discusses this. So subject to very few exceptions, the Fourth Amendment prohibits law enforcement from entering a home or its curtilage to conduct a search without a warrant. There's an 11th Circuit case, which is controlling there in, in Georgia from 2015 called United States versus Walker, which directly says that. The big question here, and perhaps the only question, is did this occur within the curtilage of this home? Now, according to the case law, the curtilage may include the portion of a driveway that is adjacent to the home and to which the activity of home life extends. That's from the Collins case. So for example, the Supreme Court concluded that an area at the top of the driveway adjacent to the home was curtilage, where the area was located behind the front perimeter of the house and was enclosed on two sides by a brick wall and on the third side by the house had direct access to the house itself through a door. 
So there can be an issue of whether an interaction occurs within the curtilage. However, if we examine this particular video, this is occurring in front of a ring doorbell camera. It's occurring at the front door. The officer is physically daring this guy to cross the threshold inside his house. The original case discussing curtilage, Florida versus Jardines from the same 11th circuit, had to do with cops bringing do drug sniffing dogs on a front porch. And the court held that that was a search basically just like it was searching the inside of the house because you're on the porch. The, the, the porch is an extension basically of the house. So here we're basically on a porch. This falls very clearly within established, within the United States Supreme Court precedent on what curtilage is. Uh, I don't think there's any question that where this occurs is within the curtilage of this house. So here, the police officers are making a great case for reasonable suspicion. And that would be fantastic for them had this interaction occurred in a public place. But if this occurred within the curtilage of these folks' home, that changes everything because it is irrelevant whether or not they have reasonable suspicion to be able to stop and detain these people and obtain their ID or um, ask them their identification. They, what do they need? They would then need not just probable cause, but also a warrant. If they're within the curtilage of the home, they need both probable cause and a warrant. And while they're making a great case for reasonable suspicion to stop and ID somebody, that is not going to work within the curtilage of a home. Their only hope, the police officer's only hope in making their case, maybe in their next YouTube video, is to disclose the fact that, aha, well, they did obtain a warrant. Or argue that this did not occur within the curtilage of the home. But that would be really an impossible task because we can see that it's basically happening on the home's front porch. Now, one potential exception I did notice here, I don't think this would apply to the man, but the female involved here, it looks like, knowing nothing more than what they showed, that she had an arrest warrant. Now, if they did have an arrest warrant, they could come and arrest her out of her house. So, one minor exception that could be applicable here. Well, there is one other common, fairly common exception that could apply, and that is exigent circumstances. So. Even without a warrant, the officers, under some circumstances, if they had probable cause and exigent circumstances, they could possibly intrude and search and seize without a warrant. I don't think that would apply here, and here's why. Because you would have to prove that exigent circumstances existed because there's a danger that evidence would be destroyed or removed. So, for instance, if, if this guy had evidence in his hand that if he got in the house, like he would flush it down the toilet or something that that's been used before here. They're just trying to ID this guy. So there's no allegation that evidence could be destroyed or removed if they go and take the time to get a warrant. So I don't think that that would apply here at all. It is a possible argument that they could make. So that's my opinion anyways. And, uh, Pretty, pretty clear cut though, because that it, it very clearly is curtilage. Again, kudos and shout out to the civil rights lawyer and make sure guys, you know your rights and make sure you always report the police. With that being said, we the People University signing off.